What's good YouTube, Dino here, and welcome back to another video. Real quick, I just want to say sorry that if this video seems a little bit rushed, I'm just trying to get it out before KBD67 Lite R3 goes live so I can help you decide on your purchase. And thank you for all the support recently. We are gaining subscribers insanely fast, so thank you for that. And let's get right into the video. All right, so today we are going to be talking about the KBD67 Lite. Now I have the KBD67 Lite R2 and R3 is actually going live on Black Friday. R3 is going live at the price of $119, which is $10 more than it used to be. And the specs of the KBD67 Lite are that it has a ABS plastic case top and bottom. It comes with a mute silicone gasket system, which honestly is not as effective as a pour on gasket system or something like that. And I can barely feel the gasket. The only gasket I normally feel is the many desk mats that I have stacked up on my desk. It also comes with KBD fans, polycarbonate screw in stabilizers, which are not terrible, but they're not the best, but they are screw in stabilizers. So if you holy mod them, they should be pretty much perfect. Now the wired version supports VIA, which is a really nice software that can definitely help with key testing, remapping software and lighting. It's really nice. And there is actually an injection molded polycarbonate plate and it also comes with standoffs, but you don't have to use them. I didn't use them and my board turned out fine. It is compatible with Mac, Windows and Linux. So that's really nice depending on what you have. And the hot swap is five pin kale hot swap, which is really nice. So you can fit pretty much any MX switch inside it. On KBD fans website on the KBD 67 Lite R2 page, you can actually find what acceptable quality standards are. Since this is a plastic case, it might have some nicks or scratches or cracks, which there are some certain things that are acceptable. Now, the KBD67 Lite comes with, of course, the PCB. It is the KBD67 Mark II RGB hot swap PCB. And it comes with the case, obviously. And it comes with the injected molded polycarbonate plate. And it comes with um, KBD Fans polycarbonate stabilizers. Comes with the mute silicone gasket mount system. It comes with bottom foam, which is just case foam that comes with most KBD Fans keyboards. It also comes with a coiled USB cable. Now, please do be aware that this is a coiled USB cable. It's not coiled and braided. It's like a telephone wire, and the coil is not very strong either. I recommend not to use it, but you don't have to drop 50 bucks on a coiled cable, a braided coiled cable, if you don't want to, because I know most people do not want to do that. Now it also comes with a carrying case, which is something that I think a lot of keyboards are doing nowadays, which is really nice. It's really high quality. You can fit your keyboard in here. You fit the cable up here and it is a really nice material and it definitely makes me feel like KBD fans cares about what they're giving out and definitely shows a lot of customer support. But one thing that I think they should do is have the case be an add-on and not automatically come with a board because I think they can definitely take off some of the price if they don't send it out with a case. And that would be really nice for people that just want to save money and won't carry around their keyboard like me. Now, the KBD67 Lite also comes with stabilizer um, foam stickers for the Band-Aid mod pretty much. But I don't like using Band-Aid mod on a PCB. I only think you should put it on the plate because it just makes it feel mushy if you do on the PCB. But again, it's all preference like pretty much everything in this hobby. Now it also comes with rubber feet and screws, which like every keyboard should, because if it didn't come with screws, well then you're screwed. And feet because you don't want to nick up the case. Now KBD67 Lite R3 actually comes with eight different colors, black, white, transparent, which is what I have, transparent orange, transparent ink green, transparent dark purple, transparent light blue, and transparent deep blue. So you can go and look on the KBD fans website and take a look at those colors for yourself. Now at checkout, you are actually going to be able to add some things to the KBD 67 light kit. If you want extra things like an extra case, an extra PCB, an extra plate, an extra mute silicone, which is the gasket silicone. And it also says an extra silicone pad, which I assume is like what the NK65 has, but I don't know. 
You can also add extra case foam and EPBT keycaps, which I think is a really nice addition if you just want to pick up EPBT keycaps with your KVD67 Lite because EPBT has really high quality keycaps and they are not GMK priced. They're, I think they're around 80, 70 bucks and they are really high quality. Now let's talk about what my experience was with my KVD67 Lite. Now keep in mind that I have R2 and R3 is what you will be getting if you order it on Black Friday. So most of these problems probably will be fixed. Now I think it's a really nice board for the price. Um, it's 120 bucks. When I got it, it was 110, but again, shipping. So it actually turned out to be about 130 when I got it. So it'll probably be around 140 when you get it, if you add shipping and everything. And I think that the KVD67 Lite is a really nice starter board because it's easy to open up and understand and mod. And I think a starter could do it. It was my second board and I had an extremely easy time using it aside from the lighting that took me like hours to figure out i went on different discords and i just couldn't figure it out so i just stick with the hotkeys instead of using via because my keyboard's pretty much broken when it comes to the lighting at least now it is a hot swap keyboard which is a really big benefit for starters because it makes building a keyboard a lot easier i think the soldering part is probably one of the biggest things that keeps people from building a keyboard and with hot swap, that is completely gone. Now the KBD67 Lite is a 60% layout with a blocker, which means you have no F keys, no numpad, no none of that. But you can access F keys with the function layer, so it's not like they're gone and you can't use them. Now I really like this blocker, I think it's really nice and it looks good. When I was first getting the keyboard, I didn't really like how it looked, but now that I have it like in person and I've experienced it for a while, it grew on me and I really like it now. It has the USB-C port on the left side, which is really nice. I don't know why people put USB-C ports on the right side. Now, one thing about the KBD67 Lite is it is ABS plastic, so it was really easy to break. And mine is actually warped. As you can see, it is bowing, which in turn warped my plate, which means now I can't have any sort of plate foam, which means no PE foam, which sucks because I love PE foam. But I guess that's what I get for opening the keyboard like 12 times. But I really don't think that should be a problem when this is an enthusiast grade keyboard. And another thing is these little screw bearings. They're supposed to be there so you can't strip the plastic, and they do their job, but the plastic still cracks. As you can see in my board, the plastic is actually cracked, and I could hear it crack when it first cracked, which I think is a really big issue, but it is up to you. So it also has a 1.75U right shift, which it might be difficult to find a keycap set for, but on KBD fans, KBD fans actually has specific keycap sets they have picked out, that are compatible with the KBD67 Lite. Now the KBD67 Lite sounds insanely thocky. Here, I'll give you a quick sound test. As you can hear, KBD67 Lite is really thocky and deep, which is really what you should be expecting from a plastic board with silicone and case foam. But I really do think that you need to add tape mod, PE foam mod, just to give it more characterization. Because right now, it just sounds like a deep plastic board. 
I think that you should only really get the KBD67 Lite if it is your first board or if you're a starter and you don't really understand anything about keyboards or if you want an insanely thocky keyboard. I am personally not going to be picking up a KBD67 Lite R3. I think it's going to keep the thocky profile and I just don't really need another one. I want another one, but I don't need it. So that's it. Are you going to get the KBD67 Lite? Tell me in the comments. But that's all for now. Peace out, guys.